Shall we take this song as we bring our prayers to a close? We are grateful, O oh Lord. We are grateful. We are grateful, O oh Lord. For all you have done. For all Shall we rise on our feet? Let's let's lift our hands to the Lord and let's. Let's be grateful to God. This is the 11th year, 11th month in the year. to be grateful. I want to just tell him you remember all he has done for you. Tell him you, have re you remember all he has done in you. Tell him you remember all that he's doing for you. And give him praise. Give him praise. Father, we remember these 11 months what you have done for us. We remember what you have done in us. We remember what you have done through us. And we give you praise. We give you glory. We magnify you we exalt you today. Blessed be your name forever. From the depth of our heart, we pour praise. We pour thanksgiving before your holy throne. We say thank you, Father. We are really grateful. We are really grateful. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Amen. Father, we are grateful. We are really grateful. We cannot but give you thanks. We cannot give you enough thanks because we see you in our lives. We see what you are doing. We recognize that it is by your mercy and by your grace that we are able to scale through to this time. For we recognize that your hand is at work and Lord, you have never left us. So Lord, we give you praise. We give you thanks. And so Father, we are here today to assess the journey so far. And I pray that Lord, today you will remember your people. You will move us from where we are. You will cause us to make progress. If there is anyone standing still, if there anyone, anyone who has retrogressed, if there be any who has not made enough mark in progressing, Lord, today, let this message bring a total change. Yes. Let your name be glorified. Yes. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this morning, I want to, I don't intend to speak too long. Uh, Pastor was thinking probably I will, I'm here to preach an everlasting message. No. I, 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 I rather prefer that I make it short and then we pray. Uh, if I can do it in 30 to 45 minutes, I will really, really be happy. Now, I want to just share on this topic, uh, evaluating the progress made so far. Evaluating the progress made so far. Evaluating the progress made so far. Now, you know, mathematicians, when they tell you to evaluate, you know, their, their questions are normally phrased in so many ways. It's, they say calculate. They say simplify. They will say, you know, they have so many times. But when they say you evaluate, they want you to bring out a value. A measure. They want to give to give a result, a tangible result that you can really look at and hold at, hold on, and say yes, this is this is the result of this exercise. Now I want to share with you what the Lord laid in my heart. I was wondering what the Lord would have me to say, but somehow, somehow, the Lord asked me to go back and talk a, a, again about the issue of progress. I remember speaking on the issue of spiritual progress about this time last year. And I'm coming, I'm, I'm trusting God, I'm, uh, this message is going to come in another dimension, different from last year's. And so I, I, I want you to please follow along. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, 10 ways by which you can measure your progress so far. And when I come to that, I'm going to take my time to just, you know, break down those steps and then, you know, those, those things and then help you to look very closely into your life. Now, I want to start by saying that 
it is God's desire that you make progress. There should be no barricade, no barrier, no Red no Jericho, no Jordan, nothing whatsoever, no giant that should, be able, that should stop you. You should even stop yourself. There's no excuse, no reason whatsoever why you should not make progress. That's the first thing I want to say. God intends for us to move on. No wonder at the Red Sea, when the people of Israel saw the, the Red Sea and they saw the Egyptians coming behind and they started crying out and shouting to God, God said, they said to Moses, why are these people shouting and crying out, out, out to me? Tell them to move forward. Let them go forward. Now God is saying to you, go forward. You have no reason to stop. There's no reason to stand still. Again, in another, in another place of the scripture, in Deuteronomy chapter 2, God had to tell Israel that you have dwelt too long. You have said too long enough in this mountain. He said, turn you therefore and go northward. I believe God will have you make a turn today. Whatever it is that has, that has made you, you know, look at things and, you know, you have concluded in your heart that you can't really. You know, at the beginning of the year, let me, let me, te let me testify. Let me give you a testimony here. So don't think I'm a super giant or something. Uh, I'm human. Uh, at the beginning of this year, I, I, I was in trepidations. I had fears. <laughs> I had fears about this year. Because when I project, usually the way I think is this. I, I, look, <laughs> I look forward and then I consider, sometimes I consider what I've been able to ach achieve so far. I look at what is happening and I project. And I, if I, if I, as I was looking at what was happening then, because let me be very frank with you, there were so many odds that were against me then. Uh, though it was a better year than 2014. I was almost concluding 2014 to be a bad year, but God said, no, no. There's never a year that's bad. Never. So I, I was almost coming to a conclusion that ah, this year, 2017, is going to be full of a lot of serious challenges, and I, I was looking at myself, will I, be able to, will I be able to make it through? But at last, I discovered in the last 11 months now that there was no fear. There was nothing to be afraid of. I like that scripture. They were in great fear, but there was no fear. Listen, beloved, I, I don't know how you, how you, how, how you are, what you are going through. It's normal to be afraid. But when you begin to fear so much, know assuredly that there's no fear. There's nothing, to, there's nothing ahead of you that God has not taken care of. So when I, I, I sat down and I looked back, 11 months back, I, I, I told myself, God has been so good to me. God has been so merciful. Here am, am I, 11 months into the year. This, this is already more than almost completing the whole journey. And I look back and I saw that it, was, it, has been, it has been easy for me. God has made it easy for me. What I thought was going to be so tough, so difficult, so bad, and so, so worse. There was, nothing, there was nothing like that. There was really nothing like that. And so today I want to, I want to reassure you that God will have you make progress. No matter what. What, you probably might be projecting like I'm projecting into the future. And you are concluding your heart, ah, there is a lot to be afraid of. There's nothing to be afraid of. It shall be well with you. It's going to be good. Yeah. In fact, in fact if, 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 if you have such, such great fear, it's simply, what that is simply showing is that there's so much success ahead of you. There's so much accomplishment ahead of you. There's so much of breakthrough, of blessings, of, of discovery, of you know, overcoming, and so on and so forth. There's so much. That God has loaded you. So if, if at all you are getting so much afraid, know that it is the other way around. It is the reverse that is going to happen. And I, I've, I've been able to prove that this year, at least. That's my testimony this year. That's the summary of my testimony. But now, now, I want us to look back and assess how much progress we have made. I am one of those who believe that God will have you make 100% progress. Everything about God is 100%. Anywhere you see less than 100% is not, is not the totality of God. Because God wants you to have 100%. Those who were here, last time was, I was sharing about the issue of the 10 pounds and 10 talents and all that. You understand what I'm, what I'm saying? God will have you, you know, bring forth 10 times what you are beginning with. So this morning, I want you to cast your mind back again as I, as I share with you. As I'm speaking now, I know some have made much progress. Some have made little progress. Some have made, as it were, no progress. 
Now, and let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me let me explain myself. Because we are not going to look at progress on, from the eye of the natural. We are we're, we're supposed to look at it from God's perspective. And I remember saying something last year. I said, spiritual progress is not always physical progress. They are not the same. They are two disjoint elements. They don't go together. But it, one can say that if there's physical progress, it could or must have been battered by spiritual, pro, by spiritual progress. Because the spiritual should give back to the, to the physical. But I, I, I am made to understand in the book of, uh, in, in the, in the book of uh, uh, Revelations, in the message that the Lord sent to Laodicea. Can we have that, that scripture? Let's start from there. Let's start from there. In, La, in Revelations in chapter 3, uh, uh, I think beginning from verse 14, when the message began to go out to the church in Laodicea, God said, I know, I, I know, uh, I, I, God was saying that, uh, I, I know, I know you, I know your works, I know, and then, you know, and then God began to indict La, the Laodiceans, for they said, I think that should be in verse, uh, can we move a bit forward, go to 15, 16, let's see, uh-huh, 16, 16, go to 16, uh, okay, so now look at that, God was saying, Say, because you have, you have said this. Now, back up a bit. Go to that 15. Let's see where the Lord began to speak about them. Uh -huh. God was saying, I know your works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou are cold or hot. Now, so then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spit you out, out of my mouth. Then, very next verse. Because that's, and this is what they were saying in their heart. They were saying they are rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. So there, as far as the Laodicean church was concerned, they had witnessed physical progress. They have gone from one to two houses, to three houses, from two to five cars, from, from every, just talk about any physical, material blessing you can talk about, they experienced it. But uh, lo and behold, the Lord was saying that, look, this is not, this, as far as he is concerned, this is not really anything worthy of note. I mean, God was actually indicting them that they were lukewarm and that he was going to spew them out of his mouth. And so their physical progress was nothing to be written about, nothing to be reckoned with. Oh, and they were counseled to do the right thing. They were counseled to do three things, but that's not where I'm going today. Now, can, can I have also uh, Philippians chapter 3? Let's go to Philippians chapter 3. Now, when you talk about spiritual progress, this is what spiritual progress is all about. Spiritual progress is about moving from one degree of glory to another degree of glory, from one degree of knowledge of God to another degree of knowledge of God. It's about a change. Actually, progress is a change. And a change is not always, first and foremost, physical. It's always spiritual. And when it's spiritual, it gives back to a physical change. It will always produce a physical change. There's no way you can, you can make spiritual progress and you know, you know experience physical progress. It's, it's automatic. But it's also possible, from what I've been saying so far, that you can have physical progress less of, of spiritual progress. You can have physical progress burn out of just, you know, uh, just, you know, sheer luck and sheer, sheer determination and sheer, you know, you know normal, normal living style, just like every other person in the world. They experience progress, you know, but no, no, not, not really much of uh, spiritual. So you can't really say anything spiritual about, about the progress. All right. So now, in Philippians chapter 3, I think we'll take it from, look at what Paul began to say. I want to read everything here that Paul wrote here before I move on. All right. Now, so in, in Philippians 3, Paul begins to say in verse 8, let's start from 8. He said, but what things were given to me, those I counted lost, yet doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. So he has a goal. The goal is about Christ. Spiritual progress is about how much you have gone far in Christ. The journey of life is about how far you have gone in Christ, how much of him you have. You know, when they came out of the land of Israel, uh, land of Egypt, they were on a journey to the promised land. That promised land for, for them then was more a physical thing. But for us now, that land is Christ. That land is Christ. It's about how much of Christ you've gotten. It's about how much of the anointing you've gotten. Because the two are synonymous. 
And like I've been saying before, if you are asking for anything at all, if anything at all you desire, there's nothing you can desire far above the anointing. Because the anointing and, the, and Christ, they go together. If you have the anointing, you have Christ, you have the anointing. And if you have the anointing, and if it's the right anointing, then you have Christ. I mean, that, that's, that's the ultimate. So this man was saying, look, I want to have more of Christ. I, I, I want to win Christ. I want, I, I want the totality of Christ. I want to be like Christ. I want to be totally engulfed in Christ. I want everything Christ. I want Christ to be found in me. Not in my own righteousness, not in anything whatsoever. I want all of Christ in me. And so he goes on to say, now let, let's get into verse 14. Let's read to verse 14. And you see the attitude of Paul. And that is the attitude I, I believe that a person who wants to make progress should have. You should have a, a, that mentality of, of not being satisfied, not, not, be, be, not having arrived, but having to press further even to the, to the, to the mark of the calling for, for which you have been called. Okay, I, I'm not saying verse, go to 14. Give me the next verse after verse 10. Okay, give me verse 10. Let's start from there. Let's start from verse 10. So that we don't waste time. He said, I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. For if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, and next verse, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count on myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So this is, this is Paul speaking, and he's talking about his, his endeavor. He's talking about his, his pressure. He's talking about what he's pressing on to do. And we can see that at, even at this stage in the life of Paul, he had, God has used him to accomplish so much. There are so many things we can begin to talk about Paul. Paul had been used, had been used of God to affect lives, to influence souls, to win souls, healed many. He had a successful ministry. He has done so many things before he was, he was, he was thrown into, the, into jail. This is one of his prison epistles. And, you know, he has done so many things. And yet, Paul was his awful, despite the fact that, de despite the fact that he was in prison. Now, look at that man. He was, pre he was in prison writing the, 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 this epistle, and yet he was looking forward. He was hopeful. He was longing. He was desirous. He was present. He said, I'm still present. I, I'm not, I'm not attained yet. I'm, I'm moving on, and I want to get to the ultimate for which God has apprehended me. And, and I believe that that should be the same desire in the heart of every believer. Can I, can I, can I, can I uh, 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 submit? Can I make this submission? That if you are not mindful of the necessity to make progress, you cannot make progress. If you are not mindful of the necessity of the next step to take in order to enter into that which is before, you are not likely going to make any progress. And that is probably the reason why a lot of people have not really made progress. Now, I'm not here to indict you. I'm not here to uh, give you a knock on the head. No. I'm not here, but I'm here to help you out, to let you know that you are supposed to make it progress. You are supposed to go from one level to another level. And when we talk about these levels, we are actually uh, uh, emphasizing the necessity for you to make, first and foremost, spiritual progress. When you look at the central theme in the book of Hebrews, you will notice that the central one of the central themes in the book of Hebrews is about spiritual progress. Let me remind you of some scriptures. In uh, chapter 6, he said, he said, let us move on to perfection. He said, not laying again the foundation of repentance, the foundation of, of baptism, all those six uh, foundational doctrines of Christ. He said, not laying again. He said, let us move on to perfection. In another place, in Hebrews chapter 12, he said, he said, he said let, us, let us, you know, uh, run this race patiently that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, not carrying away again all those weights and those things that, that besets us. In another, another scripture, I think in chapter 9, the writer of Hebrew was also saying, he said, I will not be, God will not be, you know, pleased with anyone who looks back. God will never be pleased with anyone who, having confessed and professed Jesus, will now begin to look back and turn back. We are not supposed to turn back. We are not supposed to retrogress. We are supposed to move forward 
and get to where God wants us to get to. And if you ask me, God does not have two plans of salvation. God does not have two plans. He has one and only one plan, and I will never be tired to say it again and again and again until I am able to drum it into your heart that God's plan for humanity, every individual in whatever you call, whatever, whatever you know, tribe or race or whatever color you may be, God's in eternal uh, counsel is that we all go from the beginning where we give our life to Christ to where we become like him. Don't forget Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. That till we all come in the unity of the faith. Okay? Can we have that? Let, let's read it. Let's read it together. Don't let me quote it. Give me Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. It gave some apostles, gave some teachers, gave some, some, some all these uh, 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 fourfold ministries that we all may come in the unity of the faith unto the measure of the stature. Unto a perfect man, comma, look at that, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Can, you, can we read it together? Can we read it again? See, we all, is there any exception? Certainly not. See, we all come in the unity of the faith. That's to say, we believe the same thing. We must believe the same thing. We must believe that we are not meant to remain humans. We are divine beings. We are not remain, supposed to remain in the flesh. We are supposed to be like Christ. Okay? And it says here, and till we are coming in, 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 in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son. Look at that word again, knowledge. So if you are making spiritual progress, the issue of the knowledge of God is, the, is, a, is a determining factor. Till we are coming in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That is the will of God for us. I, I say it again, that God does not want to stay at the same spot. Remember that story. Let me give you another story. You remember the story of uh, Elijah. Elijah was confronted in 1 Kings 19 by that witchcraft of a woman, Jezebel. He was threatened by Jezebel. And when he had that threat, you know what he did? He took his journey and went straight into the wilderness. And then at the point in time, he became so disconcerted, so discouraged, so, 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 so fagged out that he wished he were dead. He, he prayed for his death. And God being merciful, God said, no, no, no. You have to make progress now. You have to make progress. This is not the end of the road. I don't know what you are experiencing. Probably you have come to a point and you, you, you are you're almost throwing the toilet. Now, God does not want you to stay where you are. Don't remain where you are. You don't, I, 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 want to, I want you to understand that you are not supposed to remain the same. You are not supposed to remain the same. And that is the basis for which I want us to make this examination today. Before I go to ten, those ten things that you should look at. I want to submit to you that you, are not, you don't have any excuse whatsoever to remain the way you are, spiritually, first and foremost. You are not supposed to remain the same when you began the journey this year. You are not supposed to remain the same. You have no excuse whatsoever. And you know what God did for, for Elijah? God sent an angel, fed him, gave him, fed him twice, gave him cake. And he declared to, the, to, to Elijah, he said, arise, take your journey. For the journey is so great. And of course, you know, eventually, Elijah, he terminated, he, he, was, so, he was so discouraged that he terminated his journey. He wasn't supposed to have ended his ministry like that. God still wanted him to do so many things. But since he said, well, he's the only one, and he's, uh, uh, he's not better than his, uh, uh, his own uh, fathers, God said, okay, all right, if you want to hand over the baton, okay, give the baton to this and that, and then close your ministry. I hope you are not going to be like Elijah. I hope you are not going to close up on yourself. I hope you are not going to close the door to progress. I hope you are not. I can't hear you, church. So open the door to your progress today. The key is in your hand. As far as God is concerned, God wants you to make progress. And I tell you today, you are going to make progress. Hallelujah. Whether the devil likes it or not, you are going to make progress. Whether there are barricades or barriers or whatever it is, you are going to make progress. Hallelujah. Now, let's now evaluate. This, this is where I'm going. Let's evaluate. Let's pick 10 things. 
the Lord gave me these uh, ten things. These ten, ten, these ten test questions for us to use to examine and evaluate how much progress we have made. Number one. Let me pick them one by one. The first question I want, the Lord said I should ask you is this. Okay, you can write it. Yeah, I think it's good you write it. You can write it. What habits have you overcome in the course of the year? What habits? What sin have you overcome? Because the, the journey of life is about salvation. Every year, each one of us should get better and better and better in character. Every one of us should get better and better when it comes to issue of holiness. We should get better and better. So the first question is, what habits have you overcome? Some of us, you know, you know, you know the normal thing. The Bible talks about it in Hebrew chapter 12, those besetting sins. Besetting sins. The besetting things like, like, like uh, complaining, murmuring, things like uh, idols, idols that, you know, we adore so much. Things, uh, idols in this sense does not mean any physical object you bow to, but something that takes your time, takes your devotion, you know, and on and that, like that. So those things that have become besetting sins, you need to take care of them. Things like uh, in discipline, just, just sleep anyhow, you eat anyhow, you, uh, what again? You know, you know the, you know the habits you indulge in. You know, everyone, every man knows his own, uh, knows his own uh, weakness. So whatever it is that you overcome, it shows that you have made progress. If you have overcome an habit, it shows you have made progress. And if you have not, it means that area needs to be worked upon. Second question. Second question. Let me, don't let me waste time. I want us to pray. Like I said, I don't intend to, uh, to preach an everlasting message. <laughs> I, just want to, I just want to rouse your mind, stir your spirit, stir your mind, and push you to desire to move forward. That's all I want to do today. Okay, so question number two. How many challenges have you faced and victoriously passed over? You need to look at it. Yeah, and you need to give thanks to God for it. And don't think uh, that th all, those, all those barriers you overcame, all those challenges you overcame, it was by your own power. It was not by your power. It's not by your power. Some of us, we, we face the challenge of finance. Some of us, we face the challenge of, uh, of, of sickness. We, some of us, we face the challenge of, uh, 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 of uh, in business, transaction, you know, in various areas. But with all those challenges, somehow, somehow, we broke through. And for some of us, we came to realize that as we began to scale the orders, the door, the journey into this year became sweeter and better. And what you never even dreamt you could have, could have taken a hold of, you began to see. There are so many things that happened this year that I did not foresee. I couldn't, if they told me beforehand, I would have said, probably it's not, it, it was, it was not, it's not possible. Let me tell you one of the, one of the greatest challenges I had. It was the challenge of the, of the agent trying to uh, continually barrage me with uh, letters. Uh, and I, I didn't know how I was, I was going to scale that order. But when the time came, God synchronized events that looked like as if it was a terrible battle. Uh, some of you, you are aware of what happened. I mean, it started with my, what, uh, the, land, uh, the, the son of our landlady causing a, 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 a trouble, indicted my son that uh, uh, he, he vandalized his car, took him to, uh, to, to the police station. They were almost going to lock him up for that day. Not knowing that that was how God was going to just fill us out of that place and locate us in another place. I, I, if you told me it was going to come that easy, though it was with challenge, but I, I would have, I probably, I, my mind could not have thought it. So you went through those challenges, and then you, now you, here you are, 11 months are gone, the year is almost completed, and now you can smile back. Look, when I look back, each time I look back this, month, this year, I just smile. I just thank God. So what is coming ahead of me is, no, I, I, I just cool down. I mean, by, I'm not going to go into next year the way I came into this year. <laughs> because now I'm better experienced. 
So if I have fears at all, I know that those fears are just, they are just a, a facade to, to just, it's a, it's a disguise pre presenting a good omen for the new year. I look at that. So let's not, let's not, let's, 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 let's look at all the challenges and, and how much, how many of it have you, have you, have you experienced? Have you, have you experienced uh, victory in all of these challenges? Then, thank God, that's progress. Spiritual. That's a spiritual progress. It's part of the spiritual progress. Number three, how many truths have you discovered in the scriptures? How many truths? That's another question. How many truths? When you compare with the previous year, maybe you had, you had two truths revealed to you. What about this year? How many do you have? If, you, if it's two that you also had, it's not good enough. Some didn't even have any truths revealed to them. And when I say truths revealed to you, I'm not, I'm not talking about truths that you had either from uh, uh, across, across the sea, from uh, Canada, or from this pulpit, or from, you know, from radio, or from television, or from, where, from somebody else. I'm talking about your own personal revelation. That which God spoke to you. That which you saw in the scriptures. I'm talking about that. How much of it did you have this year? Don't tell me, don't tell me the scripture is meant, for, is meant to be read and understood by, 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 by preachers or by pastors or by evangelists. You are, you are, it is given to you. One of the things that is given to you is to understand all mysteries. Jesus said, he said, for them it is not given. But for you, it is given to you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. You, it is given to you to understand the scriptures. It is given to you, the Holy Spirit is there to open the scriptures to you and show you the things that concerns you, first and foremost. The Holy Spirit is given to you to help you know the things that are freely given to you in the scriptures. If the scriptures are not jumping at you and, and talking to you and speaking to you and showing you the way to go, then something is wrong. Then from today, we need to pray. We need to pray that that must change your life. Number four, how much has your capacity for prayer, for fellowship, for study of the scripture increased? Your capacity now. And when I say your capacity now, I mean, how much time have you been given to prayer? You know, I was sharing the other day, I said, I used to spend 30 minutes and I struggle in prayer. I used to spend uh, 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 30 minutes in the study of work, and I began to discover that after so, some while, 30 minutes was, so, was just a, a child's play. Even one hour was like one minute. Two hours was like two minutes. I began to discover that that should be also be happening to you. If that is happening to you, then that is spiritual progress. That is spiritual progress. So how much of your capacity for prayer, for fellowship, for study of the scriptures has been? That's another way to evaluate your progress. Question number five. How many souls have you won for the Lord? How many souls have been won? Can you count it? Or they, are, they cannot be counted because you didn't really disciple them? Or probably just, you are just the, seed, uh, the, the sower who was just seed, sowing the seed and never bothered about how, whether the seed germinated. I think you should, you should, you should be able, which, which each one of us should, with all that we have had this year alone on the issue of missions, we should endeavor to at least, to the barest minimum, at least have one soul per year. That look, this year, God help me to win this person over to the Lord. You should be able to, you should be able to pinpoint exactly that this person gave his life to, to God because I, 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 took the, I made the effort, I took the pain, I went after him, I did this, I did that, and God helped me. I think we should be able to get to that point. Not that you just, well, they say we should pray and then you preach and you don't bother. We should, we should. So if, if that is not happening, that's an area we need to, to work on. Number six, let me go to number six. How many prayers have been, so how many persons has your life touched? How many lives have your life, your, has, has your life touched this year in terms of your Christian life, in terms of your, your praying for them, in terms of your giving to them, in terms of your, you know, sharing them, encouraging them, so many, in so many ways. How many people have you affected? That's part of progress. If it, if it is less than what you had last year, then it means you have not made enough progress. 
You have not actually made progress in that area. It should, it should be increasing. It should be increasing. Your influence should be increasing. All right. Number seven. Number seven. How many assignments have you carried out for the Lord this year? How many assignments? God specifically gave you assignments. Or, as, or probably you have not even gotten to that point where God can rely upon you to commit assignments into your hand. If that has not happened yet, then why don't you begin to pray from today? Lord, find me useful to be able to commit assignments into my hand. And for those of us that God has been committing assignments into our hands in various degrees, how many did you carry out this year? Faithfully. How many? Against how the number that you didn't even bother to, to, to carry out. So these are ways by which you know you are supposed to evaluate yourself. Then number 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 eight. Number eight, the eighth question the Lord laid in my heart is this. He said, How rich has the Lord spoken to you? Or how many times has the Lord communicated to you this year? In terms of visions, in terms of revelations. You know, we were sharing the other day, uh, that was the uh, third day of the prayer and fasting about Cornelius. Let me use that. Let me bring that up again because that was what the Lord was trying to uh, tell me. God was trying to tell me that, look, he, as far as he's concerned, he's no respect of persons. He can, he can communicate so easily with any one of us. All that he wants from us is our devotion, our fear of him, our, 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 our uh, uh, generosity, all those things you see in the life of, of uh, Cornelius. I analyzed about six things in the life of Cornelius the other time that made God to choose him and single him out. You know, God can also choose you and single you out because of this disposition of your heart, because of, of, your, of, your, of your devotion to him. He can single you out. And, you know, pray, Cornelius was just praying one, one afternoon and an angel appeared to him. And I was asking, I was asking uh, uh, those who were around there, how many of us have ever had a, a jelly visitation? You saw angel face to face before. I have not experienced that. Let me be frank with you. I have not experienced that. The only, one, the only time I've, I've, I've had a kind of... Uh, a vision like that was, was during a prayer time, I saw the Lord. My eyes were closed. But in the case of Cornelius, he saw, he saw the angel face to face. He, was, he didn't need to close his eyes. And, not, uh, and uh, uh, on top of that, the angel brought detailed description of how to link Peter. He told Cornelius, go to so, so, so place. F look for the house of one Simon the Tena. For there resides this so, so called Simon Peter. You'll find, and exactly all the details, how they were to get to locate Peter was given to, was given to Cornelius. And you know what? They didn't make any mistake locating the place. And so that man experienced, he experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. His life was never, never, never remained the same from that day. I mean, if that man had been experiencing some amount of progress before, with that experience and that encounter, the, his life was totally turned around. All because of the revelation he had. So how many times this year has the Lord revealed things to you? And, and do you even monitor? You know, the interesting thing is that, I forgot to say this, we don't monitor the progress in our lives. We have not been taught to monitor how we have, whether or not we have been progressing or not. We don't. No, no, I, 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 I hardly can uh, remember how many times I've had messages like this telling, you know, the, the church about progress in their life, especially spiritual progress. We are more concerned about physical things. We are more, more concerned about that. The emphasis is on the minor. So you, you and I must endeavor to keep a tab. Make sure you keep a record. What are the things, the dreams, the dreams, the visions, the revelation that God is giving to you? And when I say revelation and dreams, I'm not talking about what you see in the scriptures. I'm talking about as you pray, as you call upon God, and God moves to answer you, Either through dreams or through, you know, through revelation, through trance or whatever. God is not limited at all. If he did that for Cornelius, God is no respecter of persons. In any nation, whoever fears God and does what is right is accepted. So you don't, you don't, don't, think, don't think the Christian life is supposed to be a, 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 just a, a dry life, nothing happening, no vision, no dreams, no revelation, nothing. If that is happening in your life, reject it. It's not your lot. 
It's not your lot. The will of God is that you know your direction you should go. You should know the direction you should go. And God, most of the time, will communicate directly to you, showing you the things that he has said before you. We need to have it. Otherwise, if we don't have those things, we, don't, we won't make much progress. And then, uh, number nine, what testimonies and how many uh, uh, what testimonies and how many testimonies of what the Lord has done in you, through you, and for you? Please take note of that. How many, what testimonies and how many, what testimonies and how many the Lord has done in you and through you and for you, in that order? Three dimensions. In you first, through you, and for you. I repeat. Testimonies of what the Lord has done in you, and through you, and for you. That, uh, uh, what, what that simply says is that what God, uh, that testimony has to be, first of all, the internal dealings of God in your own life first. When people give them, well, well, again, I, when I listen to testimonies, the testimonies are usually about things that God has done for, for us. But what about those things that God has done in us? And for, through us, they are very important, much more important than, for, uh, that, that, than that which he has done uh, 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 for us. That's my own, that's my own, uh, uh, my, my own point of, of thinking, my, my own line of thinking. And I think, I think there are scriptures to back that up. Praise the Lord. And then lastly, lastly, how many times have you been refreshed spiritually this year? How many times have you been refreshed spiritually? When I say refreshed spiritually, I'm talking about how many times have you encountered the baptism of the Holy Spirit again and again and again? Like I was sharing last, I said, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not one time experience. It's supposed to be go an ongoing experience again and again and again. You must be able to pinpoint exact, exactly times, in your, you know, times of refreshing. Acts 3.16. Give me Acts 3.16. Give me Acts 3.16. Let's read that scripture. Very important, very important scripture. The Bible is talking, Peter is talking here about the times of refreshing. There are times of refreshing. So, we are not supposed to remain still. Don't ever remain still. Yesterday's anointing is not good enough for today's anointing. It's not good enough for today. Acts 3, 16. And in his name, through faith in his name, okay, are we getting the right scripture? Excuse me, let me. There's this scripture where, okay, it should be Acts chapter 2, I think. It was during the, his message to the, let me get it right. Acts, Acts, I think it, it should be, is it 2.16? Okay, go down a bit. Let me, let me try and get it from my Bible here. He said, he, Peter was talking about the blessing, the gift being for that generation and for the generation to do as, as many as the Lord will come. Uh -huh, okay, is it 239? Give us Acts 239 quickly. Acts 239. Uh huh. 39. 39. Acts 239. Oh, it's 319. Okay. Okay, he said, For this promise is unto you. And to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Then go to 319. 319. Peter was saying something about the pro outpour of the Holy Spirit. He, all these statements in respect of the outpour of the Spirit of God. Acts 319. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted, blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from where? The presence of the Lord. So you can, you should, you should expect the times of refreshing. Now, these times of refreshing is not only when we gather together. There are sometimes during the Sunday service or during the Thursday service. That's why you should not miss, you should not, you should miss uh, uh, the midweek also because you don't know when God will visit. I encourage those of us, those of us who have opportunity, please don't for any reason at all miss the gathering. You don't know when God will visit. Like look at this morning, like now, now. You could see that the, the, there's a really a refresh. There, in fact, there are times when you know God moves to refresh. When there's a refresh, you will know. You, you yourself will know that ah, something has touched me. 
you know. You won't go back the same. In fact, when you get home also, you, not, you will notice that ah, ah, something has touched you. So there are times of refreshing. That times of refreshing can come inside or outside fellowship. So whether outside fellowship or inside fellowship, look forward for it. Look forward to it. When that times of refreshing come, you are refreshed. A new unction comes upon you. You are not the same anymore. It rejuvenates you, it revigorates you, and moves you forward, and you're able to move forward. Sometimes this refreshing is to push you forward. Sometimes it's to destroy the body, the yokes that are on your life, and cause you to be released. Sometimes it is to, it's to help you receive back your joy and look forward in honest expectation. Sometimes it's to bring truth. Sometimes, you know, God can, for, I don't, so many reasons, but we should look forward to it. So how many times has this happened to you? If it has, if it has happened, you know, more than 10 times in this year, then good for you. But if it has happened less than five years, five times, it's not good enough. I'm speaking by experience. Don't, don't query that. Eh? Don't, <laughs> I'm speaking by experience. I'm speaking by experience. I, I don't have the time to go into that. But if you have, if, if you have, if at least 10 times in a the, in the year, you should have refreshing. Times of refreshing. I may not be able to give you scripture for it, but I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from experience because I have, over time, I've taken notes of a number of things in my own life so I can speak from experience. Praise the Lord. All right. Finally, finally, before we go to pray, like I said, I don't want to waste too much time. What are the tips for making progress? I, I have these following tips for you. I have just about five, five, four tips for making spiritual progress. Number one, discover where you are presently and know that there is still much ground to cover. Discover where you are presently and know that there's still much ground to cover. That's the first, the first thing you must, you must do to make progress. So don't think, don't get consulted. Don't feel you have arrived. Don't think that, ah, oh, uh, there's, no, there's no big do. There's a lot of big do. You must, you must not stay where you are. You must not stay where you are. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 2. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 2. You must not remain where you are. You know, Yoruba normally say that when you stay too long in the place, all kinds of flies will, will continue, will start, you know, making their uh, shelter and abode on you. All kinds of flies will come and come, all kinds of trouble and difficulties will come on you. But if you keep moving, if you keep moving, you keep enjoying God. Praise the Lord. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 12, uh, chapter 2. Then we turn, okay, verse 1, and took our journey. This is, this is uh, Moses reviewing the progress of Israel. In fact, the, whole of the, the central theme in Deuteronomy is a review of the progress. The first uh, 10, 15 chapters is a review of the progress so far. And I think from year to year we should do that. We should review the progress. So they, Moses was re reviewing the progress of Israel so far. And he said, they, he said, then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spoke unto me. And we come past Mount Seir, Seir many days. So they moved and then they came to Mount Seir. And they stayed at Mount Seir for so many days. Not knowing that they had overstayed their period. Until God said in verse 2. Look at verse 2. And the Lord spoke unto me saying. Verse 3 now. You have come past this mountain long enough. Turn you. Not what? And it's always not what? Not southward. That's retrogression. Not eastward. Not southward. Eastward, westward is still on the same horizontal bar. That's the same horizontal bar. Let me interpret that for you. So if you turn eastward, you are still on the same horizontal line. If you know your cardinal points. When you draw your cardinal points, east, west is on the same horizontal bar. But if you, had, if you go southward, that is retrogression. And so God said, go where? Northward. Go up. Go forward. That's what God was simply saying. So, turn, turn there means change. Change your thinking. Change your ways. Change your habits. Change your methods. Change whatever needs to be changed. And then you make progress. Then number two, number two, number two. Turn you and go not to, okay. Okay, I, I, number two is turn and go not toward. Number two is turn and go not toward. Turn and go not toward means repent, make a change, and then go forward. Number three, number three. Cast away all weights. Hebrews chapter 12. The Bible says we should lay aside all weights. All weights. All those things that slows you down or keeps you 
you know, there's so much. If you carry too much weight, you can't move. Many Christians, one of the problems they have, why they, don't, they are not making progress is because they have too many weights on their head. And there's no way you can be too strong that too much load will not, will not get you down. Sometimes you may be so strong spiritually that even when the weights are there, you are still moving, you are still moving, you are still moving, you are still moving. But when the weights become too heavy, it will, it will pluck you down. May that never happen to you. So what are the weights? The weights are those things, those, those idols, those unwholesome relationships, those, those use of time that, call, call, that, that does not enrich your life. A lot of you spend a lot of time on Facebook. Coincidentally, this year, I have not... I have not been able to go to Facebook more than two or three occasions. I lost my phone twice. <laughs> even in January, I wasn't even, I didn't even have any mind to go on Facebook because I had so many things to do. Unfortunately for me, I lost the phone. So for months now, <laughs> I've not been able to go through or go to on Facebook. And I, it, just, it just occurred to me that you can do without it. You can live without Facebook. But of course, you know, you need to keep in touch with friends. You need to keep in touch with, I'm not saying you should not do that. But please, don't let that don't let that become a weight in your life. All those uh, media, social media, WhatsApp, was, was, WhatsApp guys, uh, uh, which one again? Which one, is the, which one is the popular one again? Uh, Twitter. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I don't like Twitter because they want you to follow. I'm, I'm not ready to follow any man. I want to follow Christ. I want to follow, I want to follow God. Hmm? That's one thing I don't like about Twitter. They say you follow, follow. You should keep on following. The same thing with Instagram. So why should I continue to follow, you know, follow... Uh, who am I to follow in those places? There's no thing to follow. So, sorry, I, I, that's, my, that's my bias. So I, I, I have not registered with Instagram, neither with, uh, with Twitter. I'm only on, you can only find me on Facebook uh, and uh, WhatsApp. <laughs> All right, so now, please make sure that does not become weight. All right, then, unwholesome relationship. Things that, relationships that, that are not really helping you. You should know. Friends you keep, companies you keep. Remember that word of the Lord. He said, my son, if sinners entice you, consent thou not. People who want to entice you into their company. People who want to get you because they know that you are, they can gain something, they can. But what they are really after is how they can actually also influence you and get you to their side in order to use you. Be careful how you get into a relationship so that it doesn't become a weight. Then be careful of uncommanded assignments. Whatever God has not asked you to do, please free yourself of those things. Don't let people give you assignments. Don't let people make you, their, make you a servant. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. I'm not talking about how, what to do in your place of work. You have a boss, of course. You have to run errands for your boss. You have to do so many things. But what I'm saying here is that when they begin to give you assignments that you know, you are not called out to do. Please, find a way to dodge it. Find a way to do, keep in view of, keep in view that vision of God for your life. What you know is paramount. Please, 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 don't let weight, I mean, weigh you down. And then lay aside all the besetting sins. Besetting sins like murmuring and complaining, indiscipline, in discipline about time, in discipline about sleep, in discipline about food, take care of it. In discipline about prayer, times of prayer. In discipline about study, take care of it. In, and then finally, a besetting sin is unbelief. Believe what God is showing you and press for it. Believe the, believe the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe ye his prophet. Believe what I'm telling you today, that you are not meant to remain spiritually stagnant. Believe it. Believe everything. Because if you disbelieve it, that's, that's a serious, it's an un, unbelief. Remember what the Hebrews said? Hebrews said they could not enter into their rest because of what? Unbelief. All right, I'll stop here. Let's go to pray. Let's rise on our feet. I told you, I, I, don't, want to, I, I don't intend to uh, preach for long. I want us to pray. Can you allow me for the next 10 minutes to lead you in prayer? Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Then rise on your feet, rise on your feet. If you, if you want to sit down, if you, if you know that you are better off sitting down, but don't, don't sleep. Make sure you don't sleep, but make sure you pray from your heart. Again, let's, let's thank the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. God has been so good. God has been so good. 
thank him enough. I know the time of testimony will come, but I've given my own testimony. Honestly, God, God has been so good to me. He had turned my fears into nothing. He turned my fears into nothing. He made a way where there was no way. He gave help. He made me, me to see his goodness in the land of the living. I don't know what he has done for you, but let him, let him know today that you you really appreciate what he has done. Give him praise. Lord, we hallow your name. We thank you. We thank you. We declare your Lord. Holy is your name. Holy, holy, holy is your name. We praise you, mighty and majestic God. We praise you, holy one of Israel, the one who is faithful. Faithful even when we are full of fear to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we may ask of things. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. I want you to just begin to pray, Lord. I don't want to stand still. I don't want to remain the same where I am. I want to make spiritual progress. That I will not be found in my own righteousness. That I will not rely on any other thing but, but on you, Lord. I want to know you. I want to know your power at work in me. I want to know the resurrection power. I want to push on towards the mark of the calling. I don't want to remain where I am. It, it is sin to remain the same. It is a great sin to remain stagnant. It's a, it's a terrible thing. Lord, we just look up to you. You are the God of glory. The one who desires that his people go forward. You are the one who spoke to Israel in the wilderness. He said, turn you and go northward. You are the one who said, I am not, I have no pleasure in any soul that will draw us back. Lord, we look up to you. 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 Let your mercy undertake for us. Lord, move in your power, move in your counsel, and help us that we will not remain where we are. Every area you have spoken, every outside, every side where we need to make progress, Lord, we bring before you. Wherever we have come short of your glory, we have come short of your expectation. Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Undertake for us today. And let there be a change from today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Now you're going to pray. First of all, let's deal with all weights. Listen, there's an anointing that removes yokes. And removes bodies. 
you are going to pray that God will anoint you afresh. See, I have not, I have not been tired of praying for anointing. And I will never be tired. Because that is the secret of everything. That is the summary of everything. It, the anointing removes the burdens. It destroys the yoke. It sets you free to move. So you are going to pray, Lord, even the ways I don't even know. Even the besetting things I don't even know. Lord, let the anointing destroy it. Let the anointing undo the burden. Let the anointing remove the yokes. And let me be let loose like nafta life to run the race that is set before me. In the name of Jesus. I want to begin to pray. I want to begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we know that there are besetting things that can take a hold of a man. There are weights that want to press us down and keep us held down. But we remove every burden and we remove every yoke today by the reason of the anointing. Let the anointing come upon us afresh. Lord, let the new anointing, the anointing that causes the yoke to be destroyed, the anointing that removes the burden, every unknown burden, every unknown weight, every unknown sin, every unknown besetting sin, Lord, by the reason of the anointing, let it be destroyed, let it be taken away, let it be removed in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we declare by the word of prophecy that we are naphtalized. We are like a hen let loose. We are, our hen is let loose in the name of Jesus to run the race that is set before us in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Now you are still going to pray. You are still going to pray. Lord, I want progress in my, in my, in my prayer life. And you are going to pray for special favor. I remember the, uh, the last three days of the fasting, we prayed for three special favor that Cornelius enjoyed. Cornelius enjoyed three special favor. And I want us to see pray that prayer. Because number one, Cornelius enjoyed, uh, he enjoyed angelic visitation. Number two, he enjoyed revelation. Apost uh, sorry, apostolic ministry. Angelic ministry, number one. Apostolic ministry, number two. And he enjoyed a new anointing. We have prayed for that. So you're going to pray, Lord, I want to enjoy that same special favor. Whatever details of my life that I need to know, if you have to send an angel, if you have to appear to me, if you must appear to me to give me that information, Lord, I need, there are many information I don't have, and I need information about what is ahead. Let me tell you, if God gives you information about what is ahead of you, you will not remain the same where you are. You will not, you will not, you will not, you will not grapple with where you are. So you're going to pray, Lord, show me what is to come. Reveal to me the things that will make me to press forward. I don't want to remain. Give me, let me enjoy divine ministry, heavenly ministry. Let me enjoy apostolic ministry. And let the anointing rest upon me so that I can, I can experience something new as I cross over into the new year. In the name of Jesus. I want to begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, I am asking Lord for special favor. You are the same God. You have not changed. The Bible says that in any nation, if any man fears you, you are no respecter of persons. And so every man is acceptable. And so, Lord, what you did for Cornelius, do for us. Do for us, Lord. Do for us what you did for Cornelius. Give us that heavenly ministry. Let your angels, let your glory manifest in our lives that we may know what is ahead, that we may have revelation, that we may have insight of that which is ahead of us, that we may have information about the things ahead. That we may press ahead into those things that are ahead. Oh, Father, Lord, as you did for Cornelius, do again for us. Cause us to enjoy apostolic ministry, the words of prophecy that we need. Father, before the year runs out, let it come forth in the name of Jesus. Thank you for doing this, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. One final prayer, one final prayer, one final prayer. I want to pray for yourself that on every side, or particularly, let me, let me, do, let me direct you this way. That side of, of your that area, you have, not, you have not seen progress yet. I want you to handle it in prayer now. Be sincere. Tell God, Lord, I have not made progress in this area. But because of what I've had today, I believe you. Things are not going to remain the same anymore. Therefore, Lord, give grace in this area. Give grace so that I may make progress. I want to begin to pray for yourself. I want to begin to pray for yourself. Father, you know us, each of us. You know where we have not really made progress. You want us to make progress on every side. You want us to have an all-round progress. And so, Father, today, which, whichever side, whichever area, even outside the ten points, the ten questions that, are, Lord, you have led me to, to raise before your people today. Father, in any area, there has been no progress. I decree today, in the name of Jesus, let there be progress. 
Let there be progress. I speak to your people to move forward, to go northward. In the name of Jesus, mighty Kylie Tire, of Anakato Kopeliha, Ruke Neke Luke Lenenuya, of Pangla Casa Ninka Niga Labuske. Oh Lord, let the grace to make progress let it come upon every one of us. In the name of Jesus, thank you for hearing us, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father in heaven, we give you so we give you praise. We are so grateful for what you have done for us. We look back and we can remember that of a truth. You have been our help. You have been our strength. You have been our shield. You have been the driving force, making us to go forward, but even despite all the barricades, despite all the barriers, despite all the challenges. And so we give you the praise. We give you all the honor. We say, Lord, be exalted. Lord, we have challenged ourselves. And so, Lord, you know us. You know where, what area, where, where we have not really made progress. So, Father, Lord, from today, in every area where there's no progress, in every area where there's little progress, in every area where there's not enough progress, Lord, today, let it be changed in the name of Jesus. Change us from within and walk through us, walk in us and for us in the name of Jesus. Thank you for doing this, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me welcome the pastor. Thank you.